company called Naranja, which is the leader in mobile commerce in Mexico. And I'm here to do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, thank, uh, I want to thank, on, on behalf of Naranja, Naranja Labs, uh, uh, to our friends in, in SDP Labs for not only organizing this, but inviting us. I think they deserve a big clap. Second, I want to introduce the uh, Mexican Invasion uh, team on that corner. this afternoon. And uh, third, I want to uh, invite you to mark your calendars because on October 30th and 31st we have an event in Mexico City. Uh, we are organizing an event with Endeavor. We will have the Endeavor Investor Network uh, event on the 30th and then on the 31st we will have the first Mexico Mobile Summit. And, uh, this will be a whole day of conference networking and um, discussion around the opportunity of all our businesses in Latin America. Uh, so just mark your calendars, we'll send you more information and keep us on the radar and I just wanted to let you know that this is happening. And now, since I promised, I will sing to you. But before that, uh, I'll send you a message for you. Thank you. I will sing. Okay guys, so the next, the next speaker, uh, it's, it's a real close friend of Startup Chile and also it's a, it's, it's a close friend of all Latin American startups, I will say. Uh, his name is Jonathan Nelson, he's the founder of Hackathon Founders, one of the largest community of founders in Latin America. So, welcome to Jonathan Nelson. chapters in 42 countries and giving us a global reach of 56,000 members and our mission in life is to make life suck 34% less for founders in Silicon Valley and around the world. Um, started off six years ago as four dudes and me and I hanging out in a bar. Um, my wife was really kind of sick of me just being at home coding and talking about startups to her all the time. But honey, but honey, but honey, this funding! Oh my gosh, this thing! Look, read! And she'd be like, get out of that house one day a month, please. <laughs> just go talk to somebody else about this stuff. Um, and so I did. And my plan originally was to move to Silicon Valley um, and do startups for about 10 years. I was actually in healthcare. I was working as an ER nurse um, for 20 years before this. Um, and I was looking for data on what makes a startup succeed. I was looking for data on you know, what kills a startup. When I was a nurse, way back in the day, when I was 19 years old, I was in nursing school, and I was asking one of my teachers what actually kills a person when they die of cancer. Like, what kills a person when they die of cancer? And she hemmed and hawed and whistled and whirred, and um, after 15 minutes she said, well, I guess when someone dies of cancer it's because their heart stops. But yeah, there's like 25 different reasons that their heart stops. When I was going to be a founder, I wanted to know, like, what kills a company? Like. When a company dies, what kills it? Just because of my background and as a mental exercise, I actually think of a startup or a company as kind of this little organism, and it's a symbiotic organism within like the people inside of the company and the rules and regulations of the country that set up that thing. And then the capital is kind of like food and press and customers, oh, we don't need those, right? Um, but okay, maybe not customers, but like technology, and all of that forms these little organisms, and sometimes these organisms um, jump out of water and start to crawl around on the sand, and sometimes, boom, they turn into gigantic dinosaurs, and you say, oh, little Facebook, don't step on me. Um, but startups, I think, are tiny little organisms. What kills these organisms? I've been asking that question for, I don't know, the last five years, and 
okay, well, what's the success ratio of startups? And I looked around and like I couldn't find any good data. Like the best data that I could find on how many, if you have 10 startups, how many lives or succeeds is this rough kind of rule that um, VCs in Silicon Valley generally live by, which says that out of every 10 VC funded startups, one of them succeeds. But what do they mean by success? So I kind of dug into that. Well, by success, they mean they return, the startup will return 10 times the invested amount. So if they give you a million bucks, your exit gives them $10 million. So that 20% of that company that you sell per round to an investor their business model is that they want you to return 10 times what they invested. Otherwise, their business model just doesn't work. But then when you actually look inside of those 10 companies, there are usually anywhere between three and seven of those companies that actually are profitable and actually make money. Some of them make money, some of them barely stay afloat, some of those people can eat ramen noodles, some of those people can eat pizza, and some of those can actually eat sushi on a regular basis. But out of every 10 companies, one is a huge hit out of the ballpark, five or six around there tend to kind of survive-ish, um, and a couple just die. So my idea when I moved to Silicon Valley was, well, fuck it. I can work as a nurse three nights a week, and I can code four nights a week, and I can do a startup a year for the next 10 years, right? One a year, one, two, ten. And after ten, I succeed, right? That's, the, that's how the math works. Um, so I did. I, my first three years, I was doing a project a year. My first project out of the, uh, out of the box, I think it was brilliant and way ahead of its time. I built a Reddit clone for cute cat pictures, and this was way before Reddit was all cute cat pictures. So I just got sick of looking at cute cats all the time. Um, and besides, I built it and like no one used it. Um, and then I said, oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna build a Reddit clone for financial news. Because who else, like my wife was addicted to cute cat pictures, but I know like people in business, they read a lot of news too. And I would betcha that if I did something for them, like a big software filtering, you know, like collaborative filtering of financial and economic news, like everybody would flock. And so I changed it and like no one came, like no one used it. Um, except um, through a little mistake I made programming, basically I copied one of Reddit's features and through that, um, I actually got a bunch of traffic organically from Google, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I kind of dove into that, figured out why, used that data, exploited it, and then a, a weird little thing. I found myself flying first class internationally a couple of times. It's a long story, I won't tell you, but it was free. Um, it was so nice. Um, and as I'm sitting in first class, I'm sitting in there coding, and people next to me are like, oh, what are you building? And I'm like, oh, I'm building financial news filtering software. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm a hedge fund manager. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> what problems do you have investing? Oh my gosh. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And I kept on asking these rich people, like, what their problems were investing. And oh my god, like talking to people that had problems and had money making problems, like after three years I learned that talking to people about their problems and making money is a really good source of startup ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and so I built a search engine for financial news coming out of developing countries. Um, and so I built a search engine, I did this my little Google hack so the traffic was doubling every eight weeks and I'm like, oh my god. Traffic is doubling every eight weeks. This is a startup, woo um, People actually use it. And then I'm at my meetups, and our meetups had gone from four dudes in a bar to uh, about 150 at the time. And um, I, people kept on coming from around the world and landing in a bar, like we're having a meetup tonight in San Jose. You're all invited. Um, and we had this meetup in San Jose, and people would come in and like, hey, I'm from Argentina. And I'm like, oh, awesome. 
I'm from Costa Rica. And they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I work as a nurse, and I'm building a search engine for financial news. What? I get one of you. Sure. Hey, do you know any investors? I'm in town for like a week, and you know, I need to raise like $5 million. Do you know anybody? And I was like, no, but I don't know that it works that way. But no, I actually don't know any investors. Or I didn't know that I knew investors. So finally I said, okay, my startup is actually doing okay. In about nine months, I'm gonna be ready to actually raise money. I've heard that you need to build relationships with these mysterious people called investors. Who's an investor? Let me see. Hey, you used to work with this guy who's doing that thing called AngelList, right? I was like, yeah. Hey, can I, um, can I, can you introduce him to me? It's like, but what do I tell him, dude? I'm like, like, who's doing stuff for all of these startups, like, at the grassroots? Because I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm hanging out at a bar. Like, people are asking me things like, hey, what is Silicon Valley? Where do I go? Like, do you know any investors? And these are like, really cool entrepreneurs. Like, it's like, pretty amazing people, pretty amazing startups. And then every now and then, they, like, die, and they go to work at Google. And I'm like, no, stop, because I'll never see them again. They just go, so, it's the Google machine. It absorbs them whole. Um, I think it has something to do with NDAs and not wanting to go out and drink beer when you're under a pretty tight NDA. But I do not have proof that they are not eaten. Just saying. <laughs> um, and so I, I go to this guy, and this investor's like, well, if you got great startups, I'll do something. I'm like, okay, what's a great startup? He's like, you know, a great startup. Like, no, what's a great startup? He's like, Great pitch, great traction, great social proof, great team. Okay, okay, okay. I've heard of this traction thing. What is traction? He's like, well, I, I know when I see it. I'm like, I don't know. But what, what, is, what is traction? Explain it to me. And so he did. And like, what do you think is a great team? And he did. So he spent 15 minutes talking about that. And I'm like, okay. So I'm going to make terrible guesses at who's a great star or who's not, because how can I predict <laughs> who's going to turn into this giant? beast that Facebook is, um, but let me crowdsource the screening of this. So I found 10 people and we had a Google Doc with five questions and it was the investors five questions in the Google Doc and I just had 10 people screen each application and we averaged the scores and everybody got their score, everybody got written feedback. And then the top scoring startups got 20 minutes with one of the top angel investors in town. And after three months, we screened 64 companies, he met 18, he was like, holy crap, this was amazing. Could you do this twice a year? I was like, I do this once a month. He said, what? How many people do you know like this? I'm like, I had beer with three of them last night. You should see these people, they're awesome. They're visiting from Chile. I mean, going through this program called Startup Chile, it was actually before that, but very similar to what you guys are. And he's like, you should actually start an incubator. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm a nurse, dude. I, um, excuse me, but I wipe ass for a living, I save lives in the emergency room, and I'm building a search engine for financial news. Ding! And um, he's like, no, that's kind of cool. Um, but no, 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 you should start an incubator. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. I don't have money. Um, I've never sold a company. I've never raised money. I don't really have great advice. Um, he's like, no, 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 make it about startups helping each other out. I'm like, okay, well, what am I doing then? Like, well, you have dinner and they get together and you help each other out and you know it's really I ask companies from the best incubators around the world like what was the experience was it you know three years later was it was it the fifty thousand dollars that they gave you and they're like eh, it was nice you know what was it the you know was it the advice that you got and I'm like eh, it's okay it was cool well what was it so honestly like the people that I'm with like they're my people. Like, we help each other out, and we support each other, and for the last three years, through thick and thin, like, these are my peeps, yo. Um, and so that's what we did. Um, three years ago, we did that um, for free. We just started getting together. Those eight companies, two of them died right away, um, found our conflicts. Um, and six of them, since, this, since then, those six, two have been acquired. One's profitable, one just raised our Series A, and two have significant revenue and are going out for Series A pretty soon. Um, and so I thought, hey, I win, right? Um, but yeah, Silicon Valley doesn't quite work that way. Like, 
investor came up to me and said, you know what, this is fantastic, great job. We have a scotch tasting for our demo day. Um, it's amazing who you can get to show up at your demo day if you have $2,000 worth of whiskey. Um, and, and so you have, uh, you know, the investor came that night and he's like, you know, the problem is, is that you need to have your next class going immediately and keep momentum going in people's minds. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm a nurse. I, I wipe ass for a living and occasionally I save lives. I'm really a search engine for financial news. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, um, it's like, well, you'd raise a fund, and you'd invest, and then you'd live off the management fee. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't really want to be an investor. Like, I want to build a startup, like my search engine. Ding. Um, and he's like, well, you know, I'm like, how do I make money? And besides, I have like 5,000 people on this family list now, and like three chapters around the globe. Like, what do I do with this? And he's like, eh, sponsorship, whatever. So the last three years, we have been in search of the business model. We have since grown to 10,000 members here in Silicon Valley, 18 chapters globally, 56,000 members. And we're, we, like just two weeks ago, finally had time, thank you, Torin and um, Connor, to actually like, build a decent website. Um, just because we've been just swamped. We've worked with a total of 19 companies now. Um, the market capitalization of those 19 companies is about $70 million. Um, we are last 13. Um, nine out of the 13 have at least one term sheet, valuing them at an average of $3.7 million. Um, that being said, it's still really hard for all of those startups. Like raising capital in Silicon Valley, it still takes my best data that I have is that it takes about 150 points of contact and chances to pitch in Silicon Valley among investors to actually raise a million dollars. Um, TechCrunch isn't in the business of having people read that, because that's kind of depressing. And you're like, ooh, it's gonna be nine months. What gets you to read a blog in a magazine is like, <gasps> Two weeks later, this 19-year-old kid, you know, wrote software with his toes because he has no arms, and he wrote software with his toes, and now he raised 25,000 million dollars for like an Instagram for wombats. Oh my God! Isn't this wonderful? Um, like, the reality on the ground in Silicon Valley, I think, is actually much more different, much more difficult. Um, I have good friends who have been in Silicon Valley who personally know about 500 VCs. He was actually raising a VC fund himself. Um, I think he finally is raising his million dollars now that his startup hit 10 million page views a month. So, and that's a content-based service, and they've had some design issues. His initial $500,000 came from Greylock and from Lightspeed Ventures. So he had pretty good social proof there, but raising that last million bucks was actually, over it, that last half a million dollars was actually really pretty tricky for him. Um, so I'm not saying this to discourage you guys. What I want to, sh to share with you guys is, while you're in town, there's a video link, and I can give it to, if anybody has a mailing list of everybody here, I can send it to you. It's called Silicon Valley, a 100-Year Renaissance. It's on Amazon. You can actually watch it on Amazon. It's like a $2 download. Um, but it talks about startups in 1994, and they interview a bunch of founders in 1994 about the process that they had to go through in raising money. Have you guys heard of a company called Atari? Yeah. They make some video games. Nolan Bushnell, great guy, he started like, I don't know, I think he is literally on his 45th startup right now. Um, he started Atari. He had no money, like no outside capital. He bootstrapped Atari. People thought he was absolutely insane for making video games um, on these weird little boxes. And he actually sold it a couple years later for um, $30 million. Intuit, have you heard of Intuit? Almost no VC until they actually went public. Apple, almost no venture until they went public. Or almost no venture for several years. Like the first few versions of Apple, they just bootstrapped. And so, I'm not saying, like, not to be depressing, but at the same time, it can be done if people think that you're crazy for building a startup in Argentina. 
It can be done if people are crazy that you're building a startup and cheating. I actually think that you guys have an amazing competitive advantage because I'll ask a lot of VCs in town, hey, what's your Latin American strategy? And they're like, my what? Like, you know, 500 million Spanish speakers online, the third largest spoken language, Portuguese language number five on the internet, um, a booming economy, you know, the world, everybody else in the world, their economy is kind of going, and Latin America is going, maybe if you've read a bit of international financial news, you would have heard that Mexico's economy is growing, you know, six to 10% year over year. Um, do you guys have a strategy for that? And they're like, no. All right. Um, so I actually believe that you guys are going to be the crazy people like Nolan Bushnell who actually built the Ataris of Latin America. I'm completely convinced that there are going to be billion dollar startups and many hundred million dollar startups that are starting in Latino America. Um, and so the trick is, ultimately, how do you actually, what kills a company? The best thing I can say is that when the founders just stop taking this shit, like they just can't deal with all the crap anymore, because sometimes it really sucks. Um, things have certainly sucked for us um, many times, but we're here. So I would actually encourage you guys, stick with it, help each other out. Like seriously, the people in your cohorts, the people in this room, are probably gonna be some of your best friends and some of your best aides as you actually move forward. Um, and so, that's pretty much it. Am I time? Questions? Do I have time for questions or is... I wanna be sure that we're actually okay. Anybody have any questions? Um, our co-op program, we're actually designed for companies who've raised some capital overseas and are trying to move to Silicon Valley. Every eight to 10 weeks, it's called coop.cx right now, it's gonna be changing to guild.cx. Um, but every eight weeks, companies can apply, get feedback and a score. If the score is high enough, we'll actually introduce you to investors who can Skype with you. We ask the investors, will this company raise a million dollars in this equity market? Because it changes from month to month, which is weird. Um, but we'll make changes and you can apply. So, anybody else have any questions? Can I look at Okay, Hass. What do you think? Is, I think Latin American people have one culture and we have like lots of good things and bad things. Which are the strong points that you think that Silicon Valley can see in Latin American entrepreneurs? Um, one of the things that I've think has really helped me, being medio latino, cuerpo gringo, pero alma latina. Like nobody else understands soccer in this country. So you guys understand sport, like nobody else here does. Like football, that's not really, you know, US football, that's not really a sport. Anyway, um, things that have really helped me out is I think Latin Americans instinctively know how to network, and I think they instinctively know how to build relationships. Um, it's, you know, in Costa Rica, we call it, you know, la persona que tiene carretilla, the person who actually knows each other. Is there an expression like that in Chile? Um, or Argentina? It's, it's, who do you know? Like Silicon Valley, it's weird, but it's all about who you know. And it's all about trying to help someone else. They call it, you know, we're based on five seconds of karma. Like, you know, oh, Sergio needs to meet uh, so-and-so. Yeah, hang on, let me just send you an email. Boom. Um, and that happens. Or uh, the first time that Horacio and I met at Startup Chile, he wandered into a bar. I'm like, dude, Startup Chile. He's like, yeah, you've heard of it? I'm like, God, yeah. Um, Come here, like sit down. Like, what do you do with Startup Chile? And he's like, I run it. I'm like, awesome. What can I do to help? And he's like, what? <laughs> like, no, you guys are the best economic hack ever in the history of the world. And he's like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, seriously, like, let's talk. What can I do to help? And he's like, do you know anybody who would like to apply? I'm like, yeah. Tons of people. He's like, really? And, and so after talking, we spent three days, um, or I spent three days just emailing some of our other organizers and getting them on Hacker News. 
Um, and I think they went from like 200 applications to 650 applications in three days. But that's easy for me. Um, that's literally like five hours of emailing over three days. Um, but ever since then, like I, like they really like me. So I'm awesome, I'm happy to help. Like, and literally a lot of people in Silicon Valley will be happy to help. Um, and I think in Latin America, it's who you know. I don't know how much of the five minute favor of the, hey, you should actually go and talk to this person because they're actually really cool. I don't know how much, that, how much of that we actually do. But I think among startups, in Startup Chile and the other accelerators, I think that culture is actually happening. And in the small little startup ecosystems, there is this kind of cooperative, hippie, paying it forward kind of vibe that I think is really helping. Um, you guys understand a massive market that nobody else from Silicon Valley is attacking. Like, if you can not think, I think one of the drawbacks or one of the complaints I've heard is that a lot of people think very kind of local in Latino America because they're like, oh, I'm in a small country. I'm only in, you know, Cordoba or I'm only in Buenos Aires. And you know we're really separated, but the fact is is that you could actually attack all of Latin America from where you're at. Other advantages that I think you guys have is would you guess like what an engineer gets paid at Facebook to start? 